<clears throat> so this video is just going to be the first of a of a series that's just going to happen with the inter higher intermediate and even if you're just in the intermediate level this will apply to you but this is more for the higher intermediate and into advanced kind of um, levels um, so this is again going to be the first video of a supplemental kind of video where I talk about supplemental vocabulary that can help you with your intermediate learning um, and of course um, this is also going to help you with advanced kind of topics and and learning and in advanced conversation and vocabulary building so to speak right but before I begin there are things I do want to talk about um, specifically so this right here well, I'm gonna use a different pointer yeah let's just use this green one right here so this point uh, this is just like the accents I have written right we I will talk about them um, this first is the um, stress accent so whichever whichever vowel and these all go on vowels right whichever vowel this first um, accent goes to it's the um, acute accent right the acute accent whichever vowel this goes to it receives the stress of the pronunciation right um, <clears throat> this next one is the grave accent um, and this grave accent is what gives the glottal stop it's the glottal stop at the end of a vowel so normally this second accent will go on the last vowel to indicate that there's a glottal stop at that vowel, right? So we have this uh, l'accent aigu et l'accent grave, right? right? So the um, acute accent and the grave accent. Now, this third accent you might see some from time to time, but I don't use it because it's, it's um, an accent that's used in Filipino and Tagalog. So in the Filipino language and in the Tagalog language, they do use those three accents right? Which, this accent just means that there is a stress and a glottal stop at the very last vowel, and you'll see that at the last vowel. But Cebuano doesn't use it, we just use the first two, the, um, the stress accent and the glottal stop accent, right? So this is more of like a Filipino or Tagalog kind of, kind of thing, right? And then also for this, for these video series, I will try to indicate with colors the um, verbal affixes that happen. And I will also indicate the root word, right? The root verbs and the root word for those. Um, and then you'll see that as we go along these words. Um, there are some things I do want to talk about before I begin. And that uh, one of the things that I do want to talk about are, um, what you call it? I'm going to be using, because this is a, um, in the intermediate and going into the advanced series, I will be using some Cebuano um, words and terms, terminology to explain these more advanced and and higher, I guess, higher level, higher level kind of um, words that can help better explain these words. So it is imperative that you have to have some knowledge of Cebuano in order to understand like what's being talked about. That's why this is a little bit more of the higher level. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, some of these words also I may have done before, so that some of these may have been repeats, but that's okay, you know, because now that you learned a word, you're going to learn it again. And again, this is just a um, beginning video for the new series of like the intermediate of supplemental vocabulary, right? So let's begin. Okay, our first word is timbaya, right? Timbaya. And timbaya, it's one of those words that can actually have or not have a stress accent. So you can put the accent right there, or you don't need to put the accent. It's up to you. In 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 regular Cebuano, in yes, so in written Cebuano, we don't really use um writing the accent marks, right? So we don't put the glottal accent or the stress accent. So timbaya will just be written without the the actual accent mark. 
but I write these accent marks in to help you with pronunciation and where to identify the stress and the glottal stop. Um, but yeah, so timbaya just means um, greeting, right? Any greetings, like to acknowledge someone's presence, that somebody is there and you're going to greet them, right? Um, another way we can use this is um, um, pangumusta, right? So we take the word kumusta and we can use it as timbaya, right? So pangumusta, meaning you're going to greet somebody, you know, you're going to tell them, hello, how are you, right? Timbaya is just the more native or indigenous word for pangumusta. Or nangumusta, pangumusta, mangumusta, that kind of uh, concept. Right? So we have timbaya. So um, anytime you're going to go greet somebody, you know, pag timbaya or, um, is to kind of greet this person, right? Next word is saulog. Saulog just means celebrar or celebración, right? And these two are also coexisting with the indigenous words. So we have the borrowed Spanish words as well as the indigenous kind of word. And saulog just means to celebrate the memory or to commemorate something, right? In celebration, to, to um, celebrate whatever memory is going on or the event, right? Um, and celebrar, celebración, you know those because they are also cognates in English to celebrate, right? The next word we have is lungon, right? Lungon, and lungon is coffin, right? A coffin, like when you're going to bury someone in the earth, you put them in a coffin, or lungon, right? Butang ang lawas sa lungon, so put the body inside the coffin, right? And uh, usually we associate lungon with lubog. Lubog means like to bury some something, like the coffin is getting buried. Lubog. Alright, pag lubog. Um, <clears throat> the next one you probably already know, because I probably mentioned this one, is kandiis, right? Kandiis. And kandiis is, um, is dimples. Like your dimples on your cheeks when you smile is a dimple. Kandiis. Duha ka kandiis. Two dimples. Right. This one, talao, is the is to back off. Oops, I misspelled off. <laughs> but it means to back off. To back off related to fear of doing something, right? So talao can be used to describe a situation where maybe somebody somebody's too scared to do something, right? Talao. Talao one is like a coward. Like you're too cowardly to do something. You're too scared to do something. So that's talao. Like you don't want to do it because you're scared to do something. Talao. Um, and then a related word again is hadlok, right? Hadlok means to be scared. But talao is just this more specific word, talao, right? Hadlok is a related word, right? Subai or subai sa, right? Subai is to follow, right? So maybe somebody is chanting something, or chanting a prayer, and then the the lead person who's chanting a prayer or saying something can say, oh, subai kanako means like, oh, follow, follow with me, right? Follow with me. Subai, right? Subai. Or to follow along, or like you can watch ants that are in an in a uh, aligned uh, line or something. They're doing something in a certain way. They're following each other. The ants are following Subai. Musanko is is a uh, musanko. So sanko is a root word, and it means to reach or to arrive, but it means to reach or arrive in a point in a, a point in time or place. It's specific to a point in time or place, right? Um, a related word is abot, okay? Abot. Musangko ug abot, right? Murag pareha silang duha, right? They're kind of like the same, it's those two, right? So they're both related words, but sangko is specific to a point in time and place, okay? Musangko. Um, and the next two are also similar. Uh, we have Sangit and sabod, right? Masangit, masabod. And <clears throat> masangit means like to catch, hold, obstruct something in place, right? So maybe the perfect example I can I can give with this is like maybe there are 
sticks, I don't know, like pieces of sticks or wood that are in, in the walkway or a pavement or a sidewalk or a footpath, right? And you're walking along and then you're wearing a dress, but then the dress got caught in the sticks, right? And then you're still walking and then before you know it, like your dress already ripped because the dress got caught in the sticks and then now you have a torn dress, right? That's a that's the perfect example I can give for um, mus- masangit, right? Masangit is like something's going to get caught. Or like maybe um, masangit can also mean for something to hold something in place. So um, you can have your nose holding... If you're wearing sunglasses or just regular glasses or reading glasses, your nose is that is the object that is holding those glasses in place. Okay, that's that's the concept of uh, masangit, right? Now, sabod is also similar to masangit. Sabod is a perfect example of sabod is like um, you are again you're walking down a hallway or a passageway, and then there's a table. There's a table in in the passageway, right? But you're walking in your own bare feet. And then you're running and then the part of your foot or your toes got caught on the table. And it, yeah, I I think it's happened to other people. It's happened to most people that your your toe or your foot got caught. And yeah, it's not a pleasant feeling. It it hurts, right? Sabud is that perfect example to describe that obstruction in, in place of something, right? To catch something in in place, right? It caught your foot. It caught your toe. Uh, the next word is gilai on, okay? And the root word here is layas, right? We have this word here, gilai on, and layas is the root word we have. But what happened here? Remember that um, we were talking about uh, the circumfix is gi. Uh, this in this case we have the gi something something on, and when we conjugate this verb or when we affixate this verb, this verb changes to just gi lai on because layas is the root word, and when we do when we use deletion, we change the pronunciation with the hyphenated word right that internal pause. So gilayas on is too much for us to say. Instead, we delete the last syllable, which is as, right, layas, and we just affixate this gi something something on affix, the circumfix, right? So gi lay on, gi lay on, and layas we already know means to to make to to separate things far away, to separate people, to separate someone from somewhere, right? To banish somebody, to banish people, right? Um, and in this case, it's to it's to make something go far away, right? So you're just, you, Elias, right? Get get something away from me, or get someone away from me, right? So you're making someone go far away. Now the final column that we have here is uh, for the next word is pun i, right? Pun i, you know as puno and puno. We already know what that means. It means to fill. Right, puno, and notice again that glottal stop, that stress accent on the last vowel. So pun i, we affixated it with that e ending, and you should already know what the e ending does, as I explained it in a previous video. So when we conjugate this with the affix of e, we get puno i, but again with the concept of deletion and that morpho- uh, the morphological process of deletion, we get pun. E, not puno e, but pun e, and again that hyphen indicates the internal pause in pronunciation. So the next word we have is a little difficult to pronounce, but it's pagmatngon, right? Pagmatngon. The root word here is matngon. Okay, so we have a we have this stop consonant t and the nga, right? The the um the velar nasal consonant. So we have matngon, a stop consonant and a velar nasal. This this might make it difficult for you to pronounce, but if you say this syllable by syllable, it'll be easy. Pag matngon. So again, matngon is the root word, and it means to be careful or take care by paying attention to the precautions, right? So you're pretty much handling something with care, and you're paying attention because you don't want to make a mistake or something like that, or you don't want to you don't want to have an accident, so that's why you're taking precautions. You're you're paying careful attention to something, right? So matngon. That's a actually a very useful uh, verb to use. 
The next uh, word we have is sugo, right? Sugo. Now remember, the the acute accent makes the stress go on that first syllable with that first vowel, while that grave accent makes the last vowel hold the glottal stop, right? So sugo, right? Sugo, sugo, right? And so go is to tell someone to do something or to order someone to do something, right? The examples for this one is like the Ten Commandments. Let's just say, for example, right? You have ang napulo kasugo kang Dios or sa Dios, right? Napulo kasugo sa Dios, the Ten Commandments of God or of of God, right? And they're just they're <clears throat> they're just things that you need to follow and things that someone is telling us to do something right. In this case, it's gonna be um, God, right? Sugo, and again, they're just things that you just need to follow, like in in literature, in like not yeah, like in literature or in reality. Then yes, right. But don't get this confused with this next word, balaod, right? Balao just means rules and laws. So this can be rules and laws that are set in stone or official rules and laws that were written or just rules and laws that people have been following, right? Um, and again, this is different from sugo, which sugo is just like things that people tell you to do versus balao is like, oh, okay, it really is a law that we need to abide by, right? Abide and follow by. So balaod is like the rules and laws. It can be from an organization. It can be from a country. It can be from a political level. So yeah, or administrative level, those kind of things. The next word we have is tahura, right? Tahura. And remember that ra changes from the da, right? That um, that da sound, the da. And the root word is tahod, right? Tahura, tahod. And then the a ending, remember that a is telling us to do something, it's a, it's an imperative. So remember, we don't say tahoda, but tahura, right? Tahoda. We don't say tahoda. We say tahura. That D changes in that morphological process of the da to a ra, okay? Um, and that's because the D is the final. Every time this D is final, that R sound will take its place to a ra, right? And it just means to obey and respect, right? So obey and respect your parents or who, or obey and respect teachers, stuff like that, right? The tahura, this first word here is the imperative form of tahod. So somebody is telling someone to obey and respect um, in the command form, or the imperative form, right? Our next word is um, panapao, and panapao means to commit adultery, right? Panapao. Now, the root word for panapao is sapao, right? Panapao, sapao. So that a, ah, that second a ah gets the stress, which I didn't write because sapao gets the stress. Um, sapao, right? So the word, if we if we affixate it with the pa, it changes. Remember, again, we talked about morphological process by changing the pa to, from a sa to a n, that n ending. Panapao is adultery. The note here you need to know, though, even though sapao is the root word, sapao has a complete different meaning. It doesn't have anything to do with adultery, right? It has a complete different meaning. But when the when this word is affixated and conjugated to ba, right, banapao, then the word is adultery. Um... The next thing here is isigkatao. It's a it's an ex, it's a fixed phrase isigkatao or isigka whatever noun we have right. So isigka and then a noun. In this example, I put tao right isigkatao. Now I will explain this isig um, pre or this isig kind of concept in the advanced or maybe in the intermediate series, but somewhere later down the line because it's an interesting one, right? But Isiga just means to be of a kind, right? In this, in a, in a basic sense, it just means to be of the same kind or of, of, of a kind of something, right? Um, and in this case, isigkatawa means to be of one another, right? To be one another people, to be of one another. So to, it's like to be of human diversity. Like if you see someone of a different skin color, 
from you or someone coming from a different culture or an ethnic background from you, we are all still the same people. We're still people, right? So, oh, they're still people like me. Or if you're coming from the same tribe, they're still from the same tribe like me. They're still the same people like me. They're still people like me. So, is like to be one another. Uh, right? Root word here is ibog, which means to be attracted, right? But we can also use the, um, and kaibog just is the indigenous way of saying nakagusto. Nakagusto is the borrowed um, Spanish way, the Hispanic way of saying na, uh, kaibog or nakaibog, nakagusto. They are the same thing. Something that you're attracted to and that you want, or maybe like you were craving for a certain kind of food or something like that, that you that you have a liking for, right? Kaibog, nakagusto. And we're almost done, folks. So the next word we have is supak. And supak is uh, dilit musugot, right? Supak, dilit musugot. They're not going to go, they're not going to agree with you. They're going to go against you and they're going to violate, right? When we talked about what sugot is, you should know what that is, right? Supak, kaning na supak, dilit musugot. So it's it's just the opposite, right? Um, dilit musugot is the same as supak. And the next word, yabo, and yabo means to spill or overflow. So you're pouring, here it is, pouring out something. And this something is usually like grains or liquids or like um, solids that are just like able to overflow, right? You're pouring out until it's overflowing. Oh no, it's overflowing already. So it's spilled, right? Sobra is like too much, is the... Um, sobra is the borrowed or the Hispanic way of saying yabo. Ya, yabo is the indigenous way. Sobra is the Hispanic way. Both of them are very acceptable, right? So, and that's another thing I needed to say, say as well. Is like, um, even though there's both the indigenous and the Hispanic way, they are both acceptable. Um, luas is a mouth ulcer. So let's say that you were eating and you were chewing on something and you accidentally bit yourself. And then a few days later, you have a mouth ulcer. It's an open sore. Luas is what we call it as... Um, and then sometimes the cure for that would be the alum rock, the alum rock, which is this white, clear, kind of transparent, translucent rock. It's very um, opaque, right? This o opacity of this is like very zero. You can see through it. And alum rock, right? And then that's what we use to to uh, numb out the mouth ulcer sores, right? So luas, whether um, like you bit yourself or something like that, or maybe you're brushing too hard and then like, I don't know, like you opened a mouth ulcer, luas is that mouth sore, right? But again, with this hyphen here, the hyphenated word, luas, don't get it confused with luas, right? Because you have to make sure that there's a pronunciation difference. Otherwise, you're going to say um, luas, which means to save someone from danger or from harm. So they're, they're two different complete, two different um, complete concepts, right? Luas, luas. Two different pronunciations. Um, and finally, we have taghoy, which is to whistle, right? From managhoy. Managhoy. Kinsan ng managhoy? Or kinsan na naghoy? Who was whistling? Oh, the root word is taghoy, right? To whistle, right? Like whistle. You can make whistling sounds in, in your mouth. That's taghoy, right? And then the last word, again, you already know, is realidad, which, yeah, it's easy. Sa realidad, reality, okay? One thing I do want to say about um, about the pronunciation and the changes, because this is what I notice again with um, sugo, is that with the pronunciation, sometimes the, the, the accent will change depending on where... Um, the accent lies after being um, affixated. So once an affix is tacked on a word, some, for example, like some of these um, words will change their pronunciation depending on after affixation and conjugation of the word. So just be mindful about that. And again, this is just video one of many, many, many more to come.